All right, gear up for episode number four of the Downtown Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk to Frank Gruber about his move of Tech Cocktail to downtown Las Vegas and all the cool things coming up for Tech Week. Then we're going to talk to one of my favorite co-founders yet, Koji, the COO and co-founder of Via Cycles, and he's going to explain just how cool his bike sharing program is going to be. And if you can believe this, he actually brought one of the bikes in so we can actually see it live and play around with it. Very cool. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Demo Las Vegas happening during CES this January with DeMont. We've got a brand new green screen. We've got a great crew, a great crowd. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed filming episode number four. So get ready. All that and more coming up right now. All right, welcome to episode four, everybody, of the Downtown Podcast. This show is going to be brought to you by Tech Systems, a leading provider of IT staffing solutions, IT talent management, expertise, and IT services. So whether you're in the business or whether you're in need of infrastructure upgrade or IT professionals looking for your next career move, Tech Systems can help you achieve your business or career goals. Visit them at techsystems.com. Ooh. That's good. Are those still recording? All right, welcome to episode four, everybody. Tech Systems is a sponsor. Thank them for the beer. You guys rock. We appreciate your sponsorship. I think we're ready to get into the news. So first, let's start with Frank. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of time because this is a pretty amazing step forward. We have Tech Cocktail moving to Las Vegas, yeah, we, and we you have a new office. So if you could give us a little breakdown of what's going on and sure. uh, where you're at with that. Yeah, so we opened an office here in September. Uh, and so for those of you that don't know, Tech Cocktail is a media company. We cover startups and uh, entrepreneurs across the country. Uh, we showcase the different ecosystems from Chicago to Boise to you know, Bloomington, Indiana. So um, we're really excited to move here and start you know, showcasing what's happening here in Vegas tech. Uh, there's, you know, people coming in all the time, checking out the downtown project. So we partnered with the downtown project to host a tech focused week where we're going to basically have um, different types of activities from you know, speakers to mentoring, to open office hours, to co-working, and then some fun activities too, like hiking at Red Rocks and kind of allowing the folks that are coming in the 25 to 30 to kind of get a chance to interact with the, the local tech community, but also, you know, see what downtown's all about. So tell me, how can the uh, startup uh, community get involved with the stuff that's happening from December December twelfth through the sixteenth? Yeah. So right, basically, right? yeah. So it's going to okay. kick off on Wednesday night. There's like an open reception, uh, and then Thursday there's co working at the user lib. So you can go there in the morning, co work, meet some of the people that are in town. Uh, there's sessions in the afternoon over at the downtown construction zone. So from about three till six, there'll be uh, a number of sessions, lightning talks with different people that are in town. Uh, and then that evening, we're going to have them go over to the Tech Jelly. So if you want to meet them at the Tech Jelly, you could do that too. Uh, and then kind of repeating the next day, Friday, similar thing. You know, they're going to be co-working in the morning, probably at uh, downtown cocktail room or user lib, doing sessions in the afternoon at the uh, downtown construction zone. And then a big event Friday night, uh, there's going to be a, a keynote event, and there's going to be... Uh, so I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Tim Draper from DFJ. He's going to be here. Raj Kapoor, the founder of Snapfish, will be here. And then our own uh, local uh, uh, Amy Jo Martin will be speaking as well. And then there's a bunch Can't of startups. Can't ask for more than that. Yeah, yeah. that's and, amazing. you know, we are Tech Cocktails, so there will be cocktails served that evening <laughs> okay. from 6 to 10 over at 9th and Bridger. I wanted to ask that, but yeah, I didn't want to yeah. sound like a drunk. No, no, so no, no. I'm no, glad no, you no. brought that I, out. That, you yeah, know? It kind of comes out, yeah. So okay, well, we're extremely happy to have you in yeah. town. Well, I think that you. uh, you're going to be a huge asset to the community. And, and was, was the move fun? Like, is everybody excited about being in Vegas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, so it, was, uh, it was kind of a... We decided in August and came here in September, so it was kind of a <laughs> quick decision. And, came uh, here one day later. Yes, That's exactly. Happened, Got in the car. So. Yeah, okay. exactly. All right, so now I'm going to move the uh, conversation over to Melissa a little bit. I want to talk about uh, Tony Shea giving uh, another big chunk of money to really smart, young, talented people. Can you talk a little bit about what you know about uh, his million-dollar donation? Yeah, he gave a million dollars to Venture for America, which is kind of like Teach for America, but for businesses and venture. Um, there's actually seven BFA kids Sorry, uh, that came in and, uh, a couple months ago. One of them is in the audience, but she's not paying attention right now. Right, Laura? Yeah. Laura. <laughs> uh, we're going to get a lot of clones of her, so. <laughs> so we really she's love VFA Bank here. They're part of Downtown yeah. Project. 
they've been uh, doing various things for Downtown Project, uh, working in tech and medical and uh, small businesses. So I think they're an excellent asset. And the fact that he's helping them, I think is amazing. Like it's a very good program. So I'm very excited about that. So yeah. Tony Shea, thank you. No, it's, it's <laughs> gonna be great. <laughs> All right, so let's move over to Anna for a second. Let's, so you're with Rumger, yes. and today you're going to be telling us. <laughs> yes, good, I love it. Hey, Rumger gets two quality points. Yeah. So much enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's great, and, and everybody loves your company, and everybody loves Rumger, and it's uh, it's an awesome app. But tell us right now about this uh, Lean Startup Conference that's going to be coming up. Sure. So Lean Startup Conference was basically a collection of a bunch of people who had read about Lean Startup methodology and were implementing it in their own startups. Um, so it was kind of cool in the sense that a lot of conferences that I go to, like people are just trying to sell each other stuff. Um, and this one was really more about people educating themselves. So it, there were a lot of workshops. There were a lot of really great speakers. Um, and that was pretty much it. So. so what can people expect? Like, Are you modeling it after any other conferences that people can reference? Or what would you... Expect when you come to this. Well, actually, what did you say? It was like Ray. It's like <laughs> JSCon. <laughs> yeah. And it, well, because at one point I said something like, it kind of felt like a cult. <laughs> um, did you drink well, the though, because people, because, you know, because they're really strong leaders. Okay. So check. Yeah. And there's common terminology. So people using words like pivoting and continuous deployment. I'm curious how many times yeah. you heard the word pivot. Well, that's, oh, that's actually, it was, all the terms yeah. are you know what? Years. During the yeah. conference, it was actually a drinking game. Oh, oh. so fun. they had a list of words. So people were drunk the entire time. That's how conferences usually well, should be. Right, but yeah. with the pivot, with the word <laughs> pivot, <laughs> pivot, <laughs> things and stay sober. Well, it was, like, yeah. it was yeah. for, so they, they live streamed it to oh, about wow. 10,000 people. Wow. So I think it was the people sitting at home who <laughs> enjoyed the game. Yeah, yeah. I that love that. Like during the, uh, during the elections, if you'd watch all the, the Twitter stream of people drinking, I, uh, yeah. I love that. People make yeah. dream games out of anything nowadays. Yeah. All right, well, I hope you have a gangster side because we are going to go to a hip-hop artist, a local hip-hop artist that makes a song that many of you recognize at the end of our show. Uh, we have Mike Cow that we're going to cut to now, and he's going to introduce an extended... Well, actually, I don't want to spoil it. Let's just send it over to him. He's the one... Thank you, Dylan. All right. So uh, today, I'd like to announce that we got a brand new version of the Downtown Vegas song coming out. It's the extended version. This is not the remix. The remix is coming. Uh, yeah. And, um, but uh, we do have the extended version, which is uh, about a minute longer, and it has a whole brand new verse uh, features a bunch of new downtown businesses. Uh, we mentioned Coterie, Commonwealth, and of course, Downtown Podcast. So uh, that's dropping on Sunday with the, uh, exclusively with the Downtown Podcast, episode four. So you can catch that here, uh, right here on downtownpodcast.tv and download the MP3 on beatbones.com. Back to you, Dylan. Anyways, so I saw you last night. We were up at the remote of dinner. Uh, right. did, you, did you talk to that guy I left you with when we were leaving? Uh, sure. Here? Okay. Why <laughs> not? Fascinating. Like, <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. He's like the guy that you know, we met a guy last night that uh, can handle anything you need done in China. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yes. Um, just to both. Watch this, guys. <laughs> Do it good. Okay, so let's talk about my parking spot right now. Okay. Right now, it costs a lot of money, and I want to put a chicken coop there. Oh, okay. Can you well, first, help cheers. Me, okay, can you help me get rid of that uh, parking um, spot? You know, I can't help you get rid of the parking spot, but I can, I can assist you with an alternative to having or needing a parking spot. Okay. Uh, and that is bike sharing. And so what's sitting right in front of us here is, is sort of the first installment of a, a bike share system here in Las Vegas. So it's a very modest uh, start, just five bicycles. It's going to be a gradual rollout. We're starting with sort of Zappos and downtown project employees. But it'll slowly begin to grow as, as we can get uh, sort of more user feedback and add more bicycles, and we'll expand the program as it goes. Okay, so, so tell so. me how I mean, tell me a little bit more about how it works. Like, where where can I find these bicycles? Like, who's qualified to get them? Like, sure. So the easiest way to think about it is is Zipcar, but with bicycles. So you need a bike to get around town. You walk to one of the stations where they're located, and you send a quick text message on your phone, and it checks out to you. Um, there right now, there's only two two locations: one in the Ogden, one uh, uh, 302. Uh, Carson Street for Zappos employees. Okay. But the, the, the way the system works is we can almost set a station or a location anywhere where the, a collection of bicycles will be. And you can go online and see how many bicycles are available at each station and just go there, send a quick test me text message, check it out to yourself, and then uh, you know, we charge per, per use or per, per time. 
And okay. uh, it's all yours for to drive around. Right. I mean, I can't, I can't believe how excited I am because I assume this is going to open up a whole new world that's just beyond my walking ability. And exactly. like, who knows, who knows how many great Absolutely. restaurants and places I'm missing out on. So I'm really excited about uh, this Via, Via Cycle program. So um, this isn't your first one, though. Like, tell me about some of the history no. you guys have and like where you're catching on so, the most right now. I met my co-founders at Georgia Tech, and that's actually where we launched our first program, sort of our flagship program of 40 Bicycles. Uh, it's been running for over a year now. Um, we recently launched at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, uh, and we're going to be launching uh, this winter, actually later this month, uh, in Philadelphia for a corporate campus there. So this is the third in line of four for this year alone. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it seems awesome. Okay, so I was, cru- I was cruising the website. I picked up a, a quote here that said uh, that there's more impact per dollar than any other form of transit. How did you figure out this number? Um, so as graduate students, we are actually did research on these types of things. In fact, our CEO Ooh. did all sorts of, <laughs> of master's thesis work on, on the cost of transportation, like per mile cost. Okay. And if you were to look at like, he, like uh, heavy rails, like 128 million, highways are about $65 million per mile to install, maintain, operate, all that sort of stuff. Bike sharing is in the thousands. So really? Multiple order of magnitudes cheaper, right? You don't have to worry about somebody else's schedule. It's there when you need it. It doesn't shut down during the night. Right. Um, it provides exercise. There's no greenhouse gas emissions. Like on and on and on. Right. Like it's simply a better way and just about every way you can look at it. Except maybe when it's raining or something like that. Or a date. You know, or, you know. or no, a actually, date. a date would maybe be better. You know, better you romantic. get two people on a bike. It's very romantic. <laughs> what can I say? All right. Let's talk about uh, your experience at Y Combinator. Sure. So this this made me pretty jealous. I'm a big Y Combinator fan. You have companies like uh, Swipe. You have Dropbox. You've got Bump, Cardpool. Are these companies looming over you? Like, are you nervous to live in their shadow, or no, do you feel I like mean, they've they provide they're an inspiration? And I think Y Combinator they're good at at telling the whole story, right? Because once a company makes it big, all you hear about is all the success. And when you go to right. Y Combinator, they're like, no, 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 no. It's like, like not that easy. Here's, yeah, here's yeah, all yeah, what yeah. they went through before you got there. <laughs> Um, so it puts things in perspective, actually. Okay, but now were they uh, uh, were they active in any sense? Like, did any of the startup companies that we know and love like did they come back to offer advice, or was it the same mentors that helped them only that were helping? Um, you? So there's a lot of the same mentors that help them, but they also do like the, we have the weekly dinners in Y Combinator, and they invite back a lot of sort of the more successful groups. So like the Airbnb founders came and gave a speech, and we could, had a chance to talk to them. Oh yeah, that's um, great. Sort of like Justin Kahn is is one of the YC founders, and he's also been through YC. So there's sort of a mix. Of, of different sort of experience levels right. going through there. That, that's pretty interesting, actually. So, okay, well, so um, what was the... Uh, oh, I should yeah. also add, like, yeah. the, once you're in Y Combinator, you have that whole network available to you. So you can actually right. email the founders of just about any YC company that's ever been and say, hey, oh, you know, I need help on doing this, which is, is And have you been taking advantage of it? I mean, uh, in some cases, yeah, especially since we're a hardware company, we're a bit of an anomaly in Y Combinator. So there were some other hardware companies that we reached out to, and they were, they were great. They were really helpful and helped guide us and give us suggestions and that sort of thing. Do you have and a that, specific story? Like any, um, so recognize? like the, the Locatron people, I don't know if you're familiar with Locatron, but okay. it, you can attach it to a deadbolt, and it's actually very similar. It's an access control used on your smartphone. Um, we got in a Y Combinator and we immediately contacted them. Like, w- what are we expecting from a hardware company? What do we do? And they said, hey, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. The, found- the co-founders were just great and said, hey, you know, don't worry about it. Here's what you can do. So it's a lot of fun. Okay. Well, so talk to me. We have an entrepreneurship uh, audience. What did you take away that might be applicable to everybody? Like, I mean, tell me, tell me about what you were when you went in and tell us about what you were when you went out and some of the things that uh, might apply to the general audience. Um, you learn more from the fellow co-founders in the batch than anything else. Really? And um, yeah, and I think what, the biggest takeaway is you just you got to work hard, right? Ideas are great, but it's all about execution. And the companies you see doing really well, it's not necessarily you know the most amazing idea or what's going to be revolutionary. It's those people like they they hit the pavement, they're making the phone calls, they're talking to people, they're working hard every day, and that's really what it takes. And that's just that's consistent. You that's found that across the okay, yeah, yeah. So no secret for you guys the hustlers but it is, are the yeah. ones that are really making the waves and so. what do you guys do inside your company to stay inspired like how do you keep the hustle like what makes you guys what do, what do you still um you know it's it's hard on. sometimes but it's doing things like this like you know you can toil the days in our offices or whatever just writing code and and talking on the phone but it's when i come to places like this to launch a program and i talk oh, to all the people. our podcast like that's yeah. not inspiring uh, to anybody I mean, but yeah <laughs> it's okay. you know when you talk to people and say this is the coolest thing ever i can't wait to use this program that's kind of what kind of re-energizes you and yeah, yeah. okay this is something that you know we're, we're providing something that people want and that's that's the important thing so that's kind of what keeps us going so. that's good 
All right, well, you heard it. This is Koji, the COO and founder, and one of the founders of uh, Via Cycle. So we appreciate you coming out. All right, and thank you very uh, much. yeah, we really appreciate it. So. Hey everyone, hope you all had a good week. Now this Thursday, the 13th at UserLib is one of my favorite events, Tech Jelly Breakouts. Introductions start at 7.30 p.m. following with a Stephen Mason talking about how your marketing plan sucks. Then at 8.10 p.m., Abby Whitaker will be speaking about how you can earn $100,000 in startup cash from Project Festo. If you think you have what it takes, enter the competition on www.ves.to by December 31st. And speaking of jellies, the family of events is expanding. If you're interested in learning more about what people really mean when they're speaking, check out the communication jelly on Friday the 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. at UserLib. Through various communication games, you'll actually learn how to speak and listen on the subtlest of levels. And another downtown speaker series that you shouldn't miss would be the Robin Farmay Farman on Wednesday the 19th with the mixer starting at 4 p.m. at the downtown construction zone. Robin will be giving an informative briefing on the introduction to exponential technology, how Singularity University looks at the future of technology, and an overview of FutureMed, which is a deep dive into the future of med health and medicine. RSVP to that on TicketCake.com. Now following that, on Thursday the 20th at 3 p.m. at UserLib is the extended preview of Beyond Neon, a downtown documentary. It follows the downtown resurgence and the amazing stories of the people who are part of it. What they're looking for is you and other community creatives to sit, chat, and bring ideas, stories, and anything else that can help them capture the essence of downtown. Here's a bit of what to expect. The great thing about downtown is it kind of just sells itself once people spend time here and uh, you know, hang out at the local coffee shop or hang out at the local bars and see that it's completely different from what Las Vegas is normally known for. This is really a unique story and the fact that we get to be a part of it um, is really exciting and kind of an honor. I think that it's exhilarating for us to toe the line between this old institution um, and being a part of all this excitement around us. I think that it, we're in a very uniquely placed and I think that we're very aware of our uh, fortunate position in that. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you drank the Zappos Kool-Aid. Well, if it's if it's about being around people that are inspired, happy, connected to each other, um, like love what they do, want to be a part of the community, then that Kool-Aid is fine with me. You just have to build up the courage to do it. And, you know, that's what we did when he quit his job the day we got married and the day after we started working on the building and getting everything fixed up and in line for, for our own store. And as nerve-wracking as it was, it's the most rewarding uh, experience also. I think the community here is fantastic. You know, people are going to encourage you every step of the way uh, and help you out and lend a hand. You know, that's what you get when you have not an over amount of competition. People aren't trying to shut you down, they're trying to open you up, and that helps. So one of our projects is to um, build a K-12 school and also bring in the Early Childhood Center. And I think um, for us, we just want to provide as many educational opportunities as possible. Almost the complete downtown area is filled with First Friday and arts and music and just people integrating and being a community and meeting other people. Every week we bring in between 5 and 50 visitors. Cool, smart, intelligent, excited, passionate people um, who are coming to see Las Vegas and potentially thinking of moving here. And so I make sure they have fun, I set them up with tours, I make sure that they meet all the cool locals, go, all the, go to all of the great spots, and um, just basically make sure that they get the best of Las Vegas. All right, we're gonna talk Demo Vegas. Demo uh, Vegas! Where, when, etc. 
Demo Vegas. Demo Vegas. It's going to be at the Innovation Center on uh, January 8th during CES and the end of Blog World. So that's going to be pretty kick ass. Um, pretty much, it's going to be a platform for Vegas tech companies to pitch and talk to global audiences. Um, there's 4.5 million people that come to conventions every single year. We have to tap into that market. Right. 19,000. So. <laughs> we look it up too, so. <laughs> right on. Oh, so, what are, so what are some of the goals? What are you hoping to accomplish with this? Um, well, one, uh, reached out to a couple of buddies of mine. Uh, one of them's the event manager at Twitter. And we said, hey, let's, friend, put, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's put something cool together. And uh, so that's going to be one of the sponsors. We got Red Bull to sponsor for us. Obviously, Ticket Cake, you guys rock, you know. <laughs> and um, we also have uh, Tracky. That's all a part of this. But the goal is to have all of the Vegas tech companies be able to pitch to um, VCs, pitch to investors, pitch to people that are interested about cool products because we build cool shit here. Right. Vegas, you know, Definitely, so yeah. you know, that's, you know, we got to continue to build on that energy. So that's the main goal behind it. But it's not just going to be for CES. This isn't just going to be a one-time event. All these conventions that come into town, we're going to tap into those markets all the time. Bring them out there. If we have to bus bus them out there, which we're doing now, we're going to do that too. Dude. Okay. So you know. Oh yeah. What kind, what kind of speakers can Melissa look forward to? Oh wow, she can <laughs> look forward to. Are you pitching? Yeah, no. I, <laughs> Yeah, we have the VP oh, of uh, we have the VP of brand strategy from Twitter. He's going to be giving a fireside chat, and we're also tapping the mobile team from uh, LinkedIn, which is going to be pretty oh, cool. Be awesome. So yeah. that's it's, awesome. it, yeah, it's going to be a chance for um, a everybody that's part of Vegas Tech to be able to demo the entire. Um, Innovation Center is going to be open for booths, people to demo their products. Going to have a DJ. We have open bar. I mean, it's just going to be a great time for the community to get together. I think you just said DJ and open bar. I think everyone's going to be there. Absolutely. (laughs) I'm going to be there. So where can we direct people to learn more? Like, where do you want... What do we want him to see, see online? Um, so um, the hashtag we're going to be using is Demo Vegas. Oh, and that's so also, smart. Oh, yeah. no, no, yeah, cheers to that. Cheers Nobody, yeah, that. Nobody <laughs> Who didn't come, oh, why, why didn't somebody come up with Everybody should yet. talk about the hashtag every time. Yeah. Well, that's uh, how we feel yeah, that done yeah, on podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> use the Vegas Tech hashtag. Use the Demo Vegas hashtag. And that's the best way to learn about it now. And DemoVegas.com uh, will be live next week. And you can learn more information there. Awesome, dude. That's great. Yeah. All right, thanks. That's my that's my favorite part in Mike song when it's like spell it with the hashtag. Spell it with the hashtag. All right, right on. That's good. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. Well, cheers. We got the cheers. beers, but thank you guys for watching episode four, and we are out. I have a drink right now. Oh, you got to drink one, one last, um, and now we're out. Now we're out. Bye. See you guys later. Thanks again. <laughs> Bye. Shit. All of y'all just running lips, sleeping on a come up clip. Vegas, yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers, remember like a flashback. Vegas tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.